we would like to rage! Hey folks, Nerdarchy is Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and today I'm hanging out with this nerd. Nerdarchy is Ted. Nerdarchy is a place for news, views, and homebrews for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Hey, sometimes we even talk about other role-playing games. Don't forget to crit hit that subscribe button and to tune to that notification bell. Alright man, it's time to get back into it. What is the absolute best race? In this case, you guessed the folks. We're talking barbarians. All right, barbarians are one of those awesome classes. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to play one uh, in an ongoing game, not a one shot. Really excited about it. And, you know, so many people think oh, it's all about just, you know, I hit it with my axe and that's it. But there's so much more to barbarians. They're a lot, a lot of fun, but it really boils down to, you know, if you want to find the best race, you got to look at what is the barbarian. True. It's not always I just hit it with my axe. Sometimes you hit it with a sword or a club, too. <laughs> right? Uh, but no, so um, when we did Fighter, there were so many different options. Uh, when we looked at Barbarian, though, there is also a lot of options. So we looked at, like, what what is the most important to being a Barbarian stat-wise for mechanics? You know, obviously strength and cons plays a big role, too. You need a race, if we're talking about the most optimized race, that has a, a, a stat bump to at least one of those, preferably both of those. Now, Grant, you can play Barbarians a ton of different ways, and we're not saying it's not fun. <laughs> And you can't make a strong build, but we're saying some races are just meant and born to be barbarians. <laughs> it's very true. So obviously, if we're looking at high strength, high con as you know, built into the race, uh, you know, th there's there's a ton of choices. Now, I guess we first always have to start off with our you know racial disclaimer here that you know we've got human, we've got half elf, we've got the warforged envoy, and now we're going to add the simic hybrid into this because of all their floating plus one. Any one of those four races actually are really good at pretty much being anything. Although one of those four in this case is actually less good at, at doing the barbarian. Oh, well, that's going to be your half elf, and you know there's there's two sides to this one. You know, barbarians are not known for their charisma unless you're really looking to double down on that intimidate skill. And, you know, some some DMs will let you, you know, flex and use strength instead. So you really don't need it. But, you know, if you want to get rid of that negative, the plus two to charisma will zero you out. And that can be, a you know, not a bad thing. You get the two skills. So your decision. Right. It, it's there. It wouldn't be my first choice for playing a barbarian or playing the best barbarian you can possibly be. So uh, with that, let's kind of move in. We kind of broke things down differently because there are so many races now. You know, Wizards of the Coast has been adding more books. So we kind of like broke it down by book. You know, how many races. Player's Handbook had six races right off the bat that make great barbarians. And, you know, we're not going to talk about every single one because I'm certain, you know, you gals and guys out there do not want to just have us list every little possible choice for playing a barbarian. So we're going to we're going to talk about the most notable choices as we narrow down our list. All right. For, so from the player's handbook, uh, Half Orc and Mountain Dwarf are the two that are, are your absolute best choices from the player's handbook from a statistical standpoint. And in this case, they both get bonuses to constitution as well as strength. Mountain Dwarf having the plus two to both, you know, plus four racially to your prime stats, I guess, for this class, solid choice. Right, you can start off with a 17 if you want to, or you can use a point buy and, uh, you know, add points someplace else, which can be really helpful for a barbarian. Um, also, it's worth mentioning, like, we know why strength's important for the barbarian. You're going to hit things, you're going to do damage. Con is important to everybody, but it's even more important to your Barbarian because it's going to factor into your unarmored defense. Unarmored defense and your hit points, which, you know, as the Barbarian, you know, you're going to be in the thick of things. I don't really see too many ranged Barbarians. So, uh, you know, that, that's that you're going to be in the thick of it fighting, so you need as many hit points as possible. Next up, we're going to go to the next book, The Elemental Evil Player's Companion Guide. Now, in this one, we can actually just list all the races because <laughs> there's only a couple of them that we found uh applicable for the barbarian all right well we got the goliath uh and it's a it's a solid choice that definitely you know fits into you know that barbarian build in in so many different ways yeah the, and then there's the genasi uh especially if you're playing any of the the storm herald ones you know i feel like air water and even fire to a certain extent just fit those really nicely 
Earth doesn't, but Earth is actually the best choice for a barbarian. If you're talking about stats, they've got them in the right places. For a Genasi. Yeah, for a Genasi. And then also, like, their spell-like ability, while not useful in combat, it's actually one of the best spells in the game. And that's Pass Without Trace. So, outside of combat, that's also really useful. Absolutely. So next, we're going to jump over to Volo's Guide. And, uh, you know, look, that we've got f another five choices that are going to be solid Barbarian picks. Yeah, and there's a bunch over here. Uh, Azamar has a couple choices that can be pretty strong. you got all the Goblinoid races over there. Bugbear, Hobgoblin, Goblin. you got all lizard. Their... you got Lizard Folk. you got the Orc. Uh, you got the Triton. You know, a lot, a lot of good, solid choices for being able to build a good Barbarian. Yeah, so that's a great book to go to. Uh, next up, we're going to go to the Turtle Package. There's only one race there. <laughs> and that's, uh, as you would figure, the, the Turtle. And, I mean, come on. That, that th this thing's got its built-in armor class. You know, you'd be able to really focus on, you know, your strength and not have to ha have it worry about your armor class because you just start off at that 17. So, who cares about your decks? And, well, I mean, con's still important, but, you know... Cares. Yeah, I mean, shield and just your natural armor is a 17. Or no, it's a 19. It's a 17 plus the shield makes it a 19. So you don't, and you don't have to worry about your dex bonus because you don't really get it. So it's super helpful. So it won't matter as much that you don't get, you know, that bonus to con, but you get the bonus to strength. And you got some other cool abilities as well. So next we're going to jump into Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. Yeah, uh, that's going to be another one where we're going to have two options that are very viable. Yeah, we got the, the Gith Yankee. Uh, you know, they're very warlike in, in the things that they do. So I felt definitely fits the Barbarian. Yeah, they get that bonus to strength. Uh, they get some spell-like abilities that might be useful, but you're probably not going to be using them in combat because you're going to rage. Very true. And what else do we have? Uh, we have the uh, Tiefling, right? And there's the Levitus and the Zerial are both subclasses of tiefling that would work for a barbarian they either get con or strength bonuses they get some other cool stuff but unfortunately you can't actually use most of that stuff while you're raging but you know it's a good alternative pre-rage so I, I think the, the zariel tiefling is kind of one of my favorites for any martial tiefling but you know you guys get to make your own decisions ebron ebron we have three fantastic choices Kalistar, uh, you know, looking through, they got some pretty awesome abilities that would blend well with the Barbarian. Uh, and then we also have the, the Shifter and the Warforged, all with, you know, multiple options. You know, Shifter, it, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. They're tribal to begin with. The travel to begin with, they have the shifting ability, which is like a mini rage anyway. You know, the only thing is it's going to take you a couple rounds to get everything working. But once it does, there's a lot of synergy there. Kalistar is a weird one because they, they to me, are the epitome of the opposite of being a barbarian. But they're, mechanically, the abilities they get would make you mentally tanky to go along with already being physically tanky. They get a bonus to Wisdom and Charisma. We're not going to care about that. They get one floating bonus, which we can put in Con or Strength, which makes them a choice. It would definitely be a kind of an unorthodox build for Barbarian, but it might be worth looking at. Absolutely. You know, Warforged, I mean, we've, we've talked about, you know, how awesome Warforged are in a multitude of videos. And, you know, the Warforged Juggernaut is just, in my opinion, solid Barbarian build. Yeah, Juggernaut solid. Envoy is going to get the stats you need. Uh, even the Scout is, would be Dex and Con, and their other abilities aren't bad at all. And the base, like, Warforged abilities themselves are amazing. Warforged, you know, the Integrated Protection is going to be super useful uh, because it's your proficiency bonus, an armor bonus, plus your dex bonus if you stay at medium or, or lower. So, you know, it's going to make you extra tanky and it might make up for a low dex. Absolutely. I guess we're going to move into our last book now and that's the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Four choices, folks. There's four different things that you can choose from in order to, to build your Barbarian and it still be pretty optimal. Now, we did mention the, the Simic Hybrid, you know, under our uh, race disclaimer. Uh, and, you know, beyond that, I mean, I really want to look at the Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> well, Minotaur makes sense. Loxodon is also another good choice. And, you know, Centaur kind of screams barbarian to me anyway. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, Lo Loxodon, you know, you've got that, that meaty warrior with the, you know, cool elephantine, you know, structure. You see one of those things kind of like raging and screaming. I, I would kind of be terrified. I want to say Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica is a solid book for building a barbarian. 
Uh, many of them are going to just work. Uh, the Simic Hybrid and the Minotaur are super optimal. And like all of the ones we just mentioned get really cool abilities to kind of like flush out your Barbarian. Before we move into features, uh, you know, why don't we talk about the awesome sponsor of this video and the features that they might have over on D&D Beyond. Well, that's a good choice, Ted, because uh, one of the reasons why we changed how we break up our races is because D&D Beyond, because they actually separated them out in the books. I'm like, oh, you know what? That's actually a good idea. That's easy. It made it so much easier for us to sort them for this particular uh, video. But not only that, if you're just building a character and you, you got some ideas and you just want to eliminate certain books, you can do that. You know, the sorting features are amazing over on D&D Beyond. Uh, you can do tons of stuff for free. The SRD stuff on, over there is for free. You can have a couple characters that you can build for free. Uh, then you have all the articles and videos over there, all again are free. For me, when I'm doing, you know, research, whether it's for a character or, you know, just in general for campaign prep, uh, you know, looking at monster breakdown, I can choose type. Uh, I, I can choose certain, you know, challenge range. Uh, when I'm looking at spells, I can limit it to... Uh, specific schools, specific, uh, you know, caster lists, or just look at everything in general. And, and just those, those awesome tags that they have in all of the different features um, is just utterly amazing for me when I'm doing anything D&D related. Now, actually, last night I was doing some campaign prep for the game we're going to be playing later <laughs> on today. And, you know, so I was in the campaign builder and using the hover cards because you can build your own tooltips in there. I was, you know, constructing my own monsters off of uh, monsters that already exist. You just say, create monster, select a monster, and then you can edit it and change it up to what you need it to be. So all in all, the features over there are awesome. I love it for prepping my games and building my characters, plus all the free content. You know, so we want to thank D&D Beyond for sponsoring this video. And you can support the channel by supporting our sponsors. Go check out some D&D Beyond. All right, so as I mentioned, you know, what features, you know, different races are going to wind up having. So let's dive into that. I, I think we had 21 options where races had a feature that made them be a better barbarian. Yeah, and so what are we looking at when we're talking about being a better barbarian? And that is essentially anything that is going to make you hit harder, hit more often, or particularly tanky. You know, you're looking at resisting effects, um, you know, because, of, you know, let's face it, you don't want your barbarian dominated. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing worse than having the barbarian turned against the rest of the party. So we're going to run through these fairly quick. Uh, you know, there, like we said, there's a bunch of them. Gnome, gnome cunning, cunning is amazing. Basically, you're going to get advantage to uh, saving throws from spells that affect your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Very useful for a barbarian. Halflings are, are amazing. You got that brave. You got the stout resistance. You know, these are going to lead you, you know, directly into playing a solid barbarian. And that's not even to mention how awesome Lucky is. Half orcs, come on, man! Relentless endurance and savage attacks. You're you're more durable and you're hitting harder. That's what the barbarian is all about. It's designed right for it. Uh, you know, we mentioned earlier, you know, human, the, the, you know, being able to choose during the variant, the feat, you're going to be able to build, you know, specifically the type of barbarian that you want to build. Solid choice. All right. Now we have Azamar. I actually didn't realize this was going to be such a great choice. They get some like features that are just going to be like, oh, okay, these are great for anybody. But, you know, as a barbarian, you're going to get celestial resistance. So if you're not a uh, totem of the bear, you, you know, that's going to give you some more tankiness. And they, they all get shrouds at third level that basically gives them more damage output. So Azamar got to give it to them. So the gifts are eye, that mental discipline, you know, advantage against charm and fighting conditions. Because, I mean, come on, you need your barbarian to get into the thick of it. And if he's not, he or she is not fighting or frightened, not good. Now, before we had mentioned Kalistar, and one of the interesting things about Kalistar is one of their abilities that they get is resistance to psychic damage. If you're going to play a totem bear, that is the only thing you're not resistant to. So it covers that. You also get dual mind. As a reaction, you can choose to reroll a wisdom saving throw. So mechanically, Kalistar stack very nicely with Barbarian in ways that I didn't actually foresee. The fluff is going to be a little bit trickier. You're going to have to really work that in. I got some options for that, but, you know, we'll let you figure out your own. You know, Shifter, as Dave said, you know, earlier in the video, they have their own mini rage built right into their race. You know, you do have the hiccup of having to take two rounds of building that up, but 
it awesome. Next up is Warforged. Now we've mentioned them before. We've mentioned them for a lot of things, but integrated protection is so good. And then Warforged resistance is also so good. So they're going to get immunities to, uh, to disease and resistance to poison. It's just going to make them extra tough, extra tanky. Warforge is always a great choice if you're going with any kind of martial character. Absolutely. Centaur, you know, they have that charge ability. Let's face it, barbarians typically, you know, run right into right into the battle. So that first round, you're going to be hitting harder. You've also got your your hooves as an you know, offhand attack or a natural attack. Pretty nice. So next up is Luxodon. They have natural armor. It's not going to stack with your unarmored defense. Don't even ask. <laughs> but it could be a great way to go instead of relying on armored, armored defense. You can figure out what is the best way to calculate it for you. Uh, it allows you to not worry about dexterity quite as much. Luxodon also gets Serenity, which is going to give them advantage against being frightened or charmed. So it's super useful. We can't say it enough. You do not want your barbarian going berserk on the party. <laughs> Uh, Minotaur, I mean, come on, Minotaurs, they're awesome, you know, they, they've got the horns, you know, they've got a goring rush, you know, it's, it's just a solid, solid build. Finally, we go to the last one, that's Simic Hybrid, and they're going to get some cool abilities that you kind of get to pick from a menu, so depending on what you choose, it will determine, but one of them is an advantage to grappling, so if you want to build a grappler barbarian, it's going to help you out there. Uh, and I mean, not advantages in the mechanic, but it just advantages to do it. They have like a natural armor that actually adds a flat bonus. So that would stack with your unarmored defense. One of the few things that do. And, you know, anything that's going to allow you to build, build up that armor class even more. Awesome. So let's move into our themes. What are the things that we feel like make good barbarians? And these are definitely... Definitely races that we consider maybe savage, primitive, or just tribal by nature. Living out in the wilderness, you're not living in civilized society. These are the races that are going to wind up fitting into the theme of being a barbarian. Right. And for this, we got Dragonborn, we got humans, we got Half-Orc, obviously. Goliath, any of the goblinoids. I mean, come on, let's face it. Uh, you've got the lizard folk, you've got orcs. You know, pretty, pretty easy to go there. Then, you know, we've got Shifter, Centaur, Minotaur, all work well. Those are the ones that we came up with. Now, maybe in your world, some other races wind up living out in uncivilized society. But, you know, the, the question boils down to, who are our top choices? What is the best race to play a barbarian? You know what, I, you know, the first one we're going to throw out there, just because the most iconic barbarian I can think of is this race. <laughs> so we're going to go with human. Come on, Conan, the barbarian. I mean, he is the barbarian. It's it's in the name. Come on. You know, I, yeah, I feel like Gygax actually modeled the class off of Conan. So... So I think that's like a, a solid choice for our first choice. I mean, we look at, you know, Conan's the one running around in just a loincloth. That epitomizes, you know, that unarmored defense. Absolutely. The next one I think we picked just sheer out of sheer biasness. <laughs> And that's going to be, you know, you, you heard me mention it in just about every category. And that's going to be the Minotaur. Yeah, Minotaur has always been a fan favorite for Nerdarchy. I love the Kaz the Minotaur. Uh, series written by Richard Knack, as well as the other Minotaur books in Dragonlance, and ever since their introduction, and also as a monster, it's just, I, just has always captivated me. There's, uh, in Kryn, they're more sailors, but to me, they are naturally just that barbaric race. And you see one of these things, they almost always have that great axe, which is the typical barbarian weapon because it hits the hardest. Yeah, and, you know, all biases aside, they actually do make it into all the categories. All right, so there are a number of great races that make phenomenal barbarians. You saw us list dozens, but we, we really have to pull it out and find out what's on the list. What's, who's the winner? You know what? It, you know, No matter how many books they come out with so far, they still have not surpassed the half arc, in my opinion. Some people have mentioned Orc as being a great barbarian, but I, I'm a, or the Goliath even. But I'm like, you know what? Why would you be an Orc when you can be a half orc Because they're just better. And the Goliath really is the poor man's half orc. So, you know, sorry to the, the Warforged and the Simic Hybrid and the Loxodon. You know, there's, you know, I could list off 10. And we, we really fought, you know, tooth and nail, you know, on trying to figure out, you know, who was there, uh, who was on the top three. But, like, none of us had any arguments on who the number one choice was. Half-Orc is just the best, 
you know, you don't have that that racial negative uh, that the orcs wind up getting. The hitting for the extra damage, the being able to resist an attack, and getting the ideal stat placement. You know, racially they get intimidation, so you don't have to worry about making that choice. You already have it. It just works for us. So there, there, there are picks. Hey, you don't agree with us? We got a place where you can argue with us down in the comments. But hey, before we get in there, do you know Nerdarchy is making content each and every month over on our Patreon, along with other rewards and benefits? Uh, in the description, you can find a link to the Patreon. Go check out our Patreon. While you're down there, don't forget to stop by the link to D&D Beyond. Support our channel by supporting the sponsors. Till next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.